Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Legacy Open in Worcester, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller, alongside a number one player right now on the CG Tour leaderboard, Jeff Hoagland. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Nick. And when we think Legacy and Jeff Hoagland, we think Brainstorm, we think Delver Secrets, <laughs> all these cards that we force of will. You, you said that with a straight face. Yeah. That's pretty good. Of course you have none of those cards today. None of those cards ever. You're playing Mono Red Sneak Attack, a deck you've been streaming with. You have a bunch of videos on your YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, you've just been playing this deck for a lot because you kind of, when you're you know, going for the player of the year, you know you're going to have to play some Legacy Opens. Yep. So you might as well have a deck that you can play and you know pretty well. And you've been streaming a ton with this deck. Yeah, and uh, basically, when I, through my Legacy streaming, I gave basically every all-in deck in Legacy a really good run for a lot of matches and get, to get a feel for it. And I really feel like this is the most consistent turn one, turn two deck that Legacy has in the format. All right. What uh, separates this from the other kind of all-in decks? You know, the Oops All Spells, the Belchers, stuff like that. Uh, this deck plays through Disruption much better than those other decks do. Whereas Oops, and, Oops All Spells and Belcher and even Test to an extent are critical mass decks where you have to have a high volume of cards and then if they have uh, a Force or a Thought Seize to stop the right one, you're just blown out. Um, this deck has a high volume of must answer cards. You have to counter the Chalice, you're probably gonna lose. You have to counter the Blood Moon, you're probably gonna lose. You have to counter the Sneak Attack, you're actually gonna die that turn. Like, right. you just slam threat after threat after threat into the disruption and eventually it folds. Okay. So we have, we've seen this kind of shell before, Sneak Attack, through the Breach, a big monster. You have a bunch of things, Emrakul, Gristlebrand, World Spine Worm, and then Inferno Titan are your choices. Uh, where'd you come, you know, how'd you decide on these four, and is there anything, well, of course, we can't forget Godo Bandit Warlord. The here. good Stoneforge Mystic. Sure. <laughs> so, um, you're gonna want to look that one up. Yeah, so one of the, the great things about this deck, as you mentioned the Godo at the end there and the Inferno Titan, is that we don't have to cheat all of our fatties into play like the Sneak and Show decks do with their full four Gristlebrand and full four Emrakul. This Godo and this Inferno Titan, we can very easily cast on turn three and turn four. So when you don't have your Sneak Attack or your Through the Breach, you can just like slam these fatties into play. It also makes you more resistant to cards like Containment Priest because you're actually casting these things so you're not sure. getting blown out by that hate card. Um, one question that often gets asked a lot is the 2-2 split between the World Spine Worm and the Emrakul. And the answer to that is they're just they're better in different places. Mm -hmm. So this deck with its fast man and the seething songs, the Simeon Spirit Guides, the Lotus Petals, you can often accelerate into into your sneak attack here through the breach on the first or second turn of the game. And you know, annihilating six when they only have one land in play isn't isn't that much upside and they can recover from that at five life. Whereas the World Spine Worm hits them for 15 and leaves 15 power in play and it's gonna kill them the following turn. Right. When, you know, annihilating only one or two just doesn't sound nearly as good. It's not not nearly as impressive. Uh, <laughs> occasionally you'll go a little bit longer with the deck and that's why Emrakul's good because that Annihilator trigger does, does become relevant as the game goes on to clean up a board where you might be dead on board and it can save you from that. But uh, the World Spine Worm is much better in the very early turns of the game. All right, and as you mentioned, you don't need this critical mass. You only need one or two cards usually. You can fight through hand disruption. You're on camera, mold a four. All you need to do is find two pieces. Yeah, correct. You found them. We, I was talking to someone earlier, and I was like, well, this is basically the Tron deck of Legacy. You're just like, <laughs> these are my cards, and they make all of your cards irrelevant, and uh, then you die. Those yeah. are big things. Um, the the Godo Batter Skull package is really super powerful in this deck because you want threats that you're hard casting to be resistant against decks like Miracles that have a lot of access to disruption, like Terminus and Swords of Plasher. So Batter Skull, we have enough mana to keep returning and replaying this card over and over and over again. So it's just like this threat that eventually they have to counter and then something else, you know, comes in and actually kills them. Right. And this deck, you know, as kind of jokey as it looks, is very well positioned against a lot of what's going on in the format right now. Yeah. Blood Moon has always been good, yep. but now also Eldrazi is making Blood Moon even better. Correct, yeah. The the really strong matchups for this deck are Eldrazi, Lands, and Shardless Bug are all fantastic matchups. And uh, Miracles, I think, is as close as you're gonna get to for a deck that's not dedicatedly beating Miracles. Sure. All right. So we've got the fast mana, we got the creatures, and we got the hate cards. We got to touch on Chalice, of course, because Chalice is another one of these cards that just shuts down so many decks. Yeah, and this deck, you know, we have the full eight soul lands, we have four lotus petals, four simian spirit guides, so we're putting Chalice on one on turn one a lot of the time. You also have the really nuts turn ones on the play where you cast your seething song, and instead of through the bridge, you go Chalice for one, Blood Moon, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy casting spells. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So the idea of the deck is right there. Let's go over the cyborg cards. We've got more copies of Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon, basically. Yep. Turnosphere is another disruption piece. Uh, let's talk about Pyromancy. Where's this Legacy All-Star here? So, uh, Legacy staple Pyromancy. Um, so, 
again, I mentioned earlier that against the disruption decks with force, you just want to have a bunch of must answer cards. So Pyromancy is another one of these cards that requires your opponent to have the answer or they're going to lose the game because our deck's full of cards that cost eight and 11 <laughs> and six. And usually two Pyromancy activations is enough to kill most opponents. Um, this card's primarily there for miracles too because they often have a couple containment priests on their sideboard. And this gives you something to do with your Emrakuls and your World Spine Worms and you can't be sneak attacking or through the breaching them into play. Right, I imagine it kind of can pull some weight against the you know the Crocus decks and things like that can take care yeah, of some of your guys. Definitely. Anytime your your sneak attack might be a little bit black, pyromancy is going to be excellent. Sure. All right. Other things we've got you know just catch all answers. We got boil if when you really got to blow up some land, shattering spree for artifacts, and then the pillar. I imagine this is for stuff like storm. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted another permanent based hate card for for storm. Uh, Trinisphere has diminishing returns in multiples, so. The, the Chalice, Trinisphere, Pyrostatic Pillar, if you see one or two of those, usually you're going to win the game against one. Okay. So for people looking to try to play this deck, what would you advise them to do? You know, the, tips, advice, and you know, why they should play this deck? Yeah, so um, again, I think you should play this deck if you're looking for something that gives you the most raw power the Legacy format has to offer. It's all about overpowering your opponent. You are, you are the de facto question deck in every matchup. You're not the answer deck. Um, <laughs> There are a couple of really good pieces of advice I can give. The first is that Seething Song is your card that you board out the most often. It comes out against all of the decks that play Force of Will and Counter Magic and Discard because, again, you just want a high volume of uh, must answer cards against them, and this just makes mana. So, sure. post board, you just want to like, bring in more cards like Pyromancy and things that they have to counter. Okay. Um, the other thing is against Storm, it's just a good chalice tip in general, is that prioritizing putting Chalice on zero as opposed to putting Chalice on one is very good against Storm. Uh, the last Open that I played this deck and I lost to Storm twice, and I think I definitely would have won both those matches had my Chalice on one been on zero. Yeah. Shuts down LED, Lotus Petal, a yeah. bunch of cards Especially considering we're a Blood Moon deck, so like if all of their lands make red mana and you put the Chalice on in zero, they can't even, you know, abrupt decay at all. Sure. Because they can't make mana. Those colors are mana. All right. Well, you're doing uh, pretty good so far. You're 2-0 after your buys. Yep. Crushing people, doing uh, what God intended here in the Legacy format. Rich magic the way Richard Garfield envisioned it so many years ago. <laughs> All right, Jeff, thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Weston.